Hi, I'm Em from 21 Readers, and today I'm reviewing Apples Never Fall and comparing the book to the show. This video is going to be containing spoilers for both the book and all seven episodes of the show, which is currently streaming on Peacock. Overall, I thought that the show improved upon the book. Specifically, I thought it improved on the mystery thriller aspect of it, and I think it improved on the overarching themes that the book was trying to comment on, specifically how the four adult children in the family are repeating patterns learned from their parents. First, I'm going to talk about the changes they made to our family members, four adult children and the two parents. Then I'm going to talk about how the show's structure was improved in the book. Then I'm going to talk about how the show improved on the suspense factor or the mystery thriller at the center, and that's where I'll get more into the ending because episode 7 was nearly completely new and not in the book. So we'll have characters, structure, the mystery slash the ending. Starting with the characters, they changed the most with Brooke and Troy and some without Logan and Amy was mostly the same from the book. For the kids, I'll go in order of their main episode, so starting with Logan. Him getting broken up with by Indira was in the book. However, in the book, Logan was a community college professor and Indira broke up with him for being too passive in his life choices, whereas in the show, Indira breaks up with him for being too attached to his family and not wanting to leave Florida to move with her to Seattle. The boat element was different. In the show, Logan lives on a boat and works with boats. That's not really relevant to the arc with Indira. That's more relevant to the mystery thriller aspect. I thought that the boat added more suspense with the mystery thriller aspect, which as I mentioned in my previous review of episode one, I thought that the mystery at the center of the book was the weakest part of the book. And so as I predicted when I reread this book last week, they added more suspense elements and more layers to this mystery and the boat mystery regarding who took out the boat and what did Stan have in the bag that ended up being more suspenseful although it wasn't trophies in the bag in the book it was carpet because in addition to getting his car detailed Stan also got new carpets put in while Joy was away, which is something that Joy had wanted him to do. So overall, I think that Indira's reason for breaking up with Logan was smart since I thought it was more obvious or overt what Logan's trait is compared to his parents. In other words, how are the patterns that Logan is continuing from his parents continuing in his current relationships? And I thought that was shown more evidently by the Indira reason for breaking up with him in the show versus her reason for breaking up with him for being too passive in the book. On to Amy. Of the four siblings, I think Amy's arc was the most similar in the show versus the book. We have her struggling with her mental health and her getting together with her roommate, Simon. The main differences from the show and the book is in the book, she's a taste tester for food and not an influencer but it made sense why they made her an influencer because it tied into the added layers of this mystery because in episode 7 we see that Savannah was seeing on Instagram her post about the hope circle and we also have the new character of Harry and Savannah's mom and Amy and Brooke going to find her. That character and Amy and Brooke going to find her because of Amy asking for tips or hints about the case that was new as well. So the main things that were added to Amy's arc were parts of the mystery thriller aspect, not so much her relationship. The other thing that was added was her writing a letter and her mother Joyce helping her go to rehab, it's implied, and that was new. Although she did have mental health struggles in the book, it wasn't as overtly stated on page what specifically she was struggling with or how Joy helped or didn't help with that. And I thought that helped to add more layers as to why Amy was the only one to continue reaching out to Joy when the other three siblings had iced her out and it helps the viewer to be more empathetic to Joy and to care more about her when at the time there could have been so many reasons why viewers would not really care about wanting to know where Joy was or think that Joy was a caring spouse and mother. Next is Brooke's episode. Brooke had the most differences to her personal arc because in the book Brooke was in the process of filing for divorce from her husband and she had her own physical therapist practice that was struggling. The physical therapist practice was still the same but in this one she has a girlfriend named Gina who she's engaged to and then her hooking up with Savannah was not in the book. I think that was probably the biggest shock as a viewer because since I knew the whodunit of it all, episode 7 wasn't as shocking for me. Beyond the new stuff they added to add suspense, it was still ultimately the same whodunit of it all. But the bombshell of Amy at the end of episode 3 into Brooke's episode, episode 4, about Brooke and Savannah together was a complete shock for me because it wasn't in the book. Which reminds me that in episode 7 we never really got 
Savannah like explaining herself like here are all the ways I manipulated the family and each person because in the book we do get that where she's like I manipulated Amy by bringing a dessert to the birthday party and I manipulated Stan by seducing him etc etc she like listed off all the things that she did in the book kind of like a typical villain monologue but I like how they cut that out in episode 7 and they just let the viewer observe from themselves oh here's how Savannah's manipulated each person in this family whether discreetly or indiscreetly which reminds me it was implied that the pills that savannah was hiding or messing with is what led to joy collapsing during the party i think i wrote in my notes because i was taking notes while i was watching for each episode that i thought we were going to circle back to that in episode seven when savannah does a tell-all of what she did but then we never got a tell-all which i think is good we didn't get a tell-all because that can come off as cheesy but i just realized that moving on to troy episode five troy's episode was my favorite of the whole show but i'll elaborate when i get to the structure of the show troy was the same in that he was divorced and debating if he was going to sign over his embryos to his ex-wife or not but the storyline of him sleeping with his co-worker who's also his boss's wife was completely new i had accidentally spoiled myself that lucia and marty were married because i had seen the cast for the wikipedia page and it listed their last names so it unfortunately wasn't a surprise that they were married but it was a surprise how the events unfolded with Troy admitting what he did and then Lucia telling him off and relating it back to his issues with his mom stuff like that those are changes with their four adult children and their personal arcs next I'm gonna talk about Stan and Joy I was impressed with how Stan was more nuanced in the show than I thought he was in the book because in the book I thought he was very harboring anger curmudgeon but by the end particularly the way that they structured the kids finding the note from Dennis the person that Joy had an affair with I thought that that was placed in a way that made audiences more likely to be empathetic towards Stan which reminds me that him knocking out somebody's teeth on the tennis court was also not in the book and it reminds me that I was impressed with how the show continued to give us a little bit of that public opinion lens like how community members and neighbors were viewing what was going on because I thought that that was one of the more well done elements of the book was how we were getting perspectives from different community members so I like how we were able to kind of get an idea of what the public was thinking about this whole thing in scenes such as the tennis incident with the guy's teeth and when they were at the hope circle and with the neighbor coming to knock on the door I'm glad that they still kept that in there without it being the center of attention. Joy really didn't get as much screen time as I was thinking and she didn't get as many monologues as I was guessing. I guess I really assumed that since Annette Benning was cast in this role she was going to be more of this all-consuming figure. I feel like the standout performances from the show were the adult children, not so much Annette or Joy, which makes sense because Joy wasn't there in the present timeline for most of the show, but I guess I just thought it was going to be a little bit more showy. Although it was very satisfying to finally see the Joy Stan fight in episode 7, the conversation that got recorded in the podcast. However, the cat mouse of her and Savannah in episode 7 was quite satisfying. Okay, moving on to the structure of the show, I was very impressed with how the way that they structured the episodes elevated the themes of the book. More specifically, we didn't get the information about Harry until episode 5, Troy's episode, which I thought was very smart. But in the book, we were getting mentions of the Harry of it all every chapter. And in the chapters, we're flipping whose point of view is telling the story in different paragraphs. So we're constantly bouncing around who's talking, whose point of view is it within the chapter. So at any point in the story, you're really in the heads of everybody, all the adult children, both the parents and community members. And so because of that, Harry was always this looming thing and the whole stand getting dropped was always happening. So in other words, the author, Leanne Moriarty, who was an executive producer on the show, she really interwove all of these characters and arcs at all times we were always focused on them. So I thought that the choice to focus on each family member per episode was really smart, particularly episode five when they saved the Harry of it all till episode five. I remember even in my notes in episode three or four thinking like, did they take the Harry thing out? The Harry thing being Stan not being Harry's coach anymore. But wow, episode five, I cried twice. I was not expecting to cry during this show, but we have this opening sequence where we get to see Troy and Harry in adolescence and we get to see Harry cheating and then Troy calling him out on it, which results in Stan hitting Troy. And then immediately we hear the phone call of Harry's dad dropping Stan as Harry's coach and then Stan immediately blaming it on Troy. In the book, Stan does not blame it on Troy, overtly at least. 
is described as, oh, randomly, Harry's dad decided that they were gonna pick somebody else for coaching. Even though they've mentioned in the book that Troy and Harry would get in fights, it's not directly blamed on Troy as the reason that Harry's dad dropped him. Unless that's how other readers interpreted it, I didn't interpret it as that. But the show very pointedly, the way that they decided to sequence these scenes, Stan is blaming Troy. And then another thing that was slightly tweaked with that is that when we eventually find out that Joy's the one that called Harry's dad to tell him to drop Stan as the coach, Joy says, oh, it's so that Stan could focus more on being a father to the kids. It wasn't so that Stan could be their coach. So I think in the show, it's more centered on tennis. Specifically, Joy says that she wanted Stan to be the focus on being the kids' coaches. But in the book, it's not tennis focused. It's more kid focused, like being a present father for your kids, not being a present and effective coach for your kids. It was emotional seeing the way that they edited that of Troy thinking about his adolescence and how him and Harry fighting resulted in his dad hitting him and then his dad blaming him for the Harry thing and how Harry's a famous athlete now. And then now Troy thinking about his own trauma that he's carried with him and how Stan to this day still blames him. I couldn't help but get a little bit of Kendall Roy vibes from his episode. Kendall was the oldest son in the show Succession and Kendall was my favorite character. So I thought it was funny that I was thinking that episode five was my favorite episode and Troy was my favorite character or at least the character that I was most emotionally compelled by because I was thinking of course I like this character of course I'm emotionally compelled by him I liked Kendall the most in succession so that being said that was the first time that I cried watching the show and then that's when I really started to realize oh the show is trying to be very overt about how the adult children are repeating patterns of their parents because we have Troy getting with his coworker, the same episode that we had the dentist letter uncovered, which is the person that Joy had an affair with. And then back to episode four, we have Brooke and Savannah. And then the whole conversation about Stan thinking he won in a relationship. And then right after that, we have Brooke using the same language with her partner, Gina, of her trying to win in the relationship or feeling like she was losing. So episodes four and five was really when I started to notice, oh, the writing is being very intentional here with getting the audience to see this thesis of apples never fall. The dysfunctional family system that we have here is continuing patterns. The adult children are doing exactly what their parents modeled for them. And we're seeing in real time what impact it's having on them in their personal relationships, in their relationships with each other, in their relationships with their parents, and in, in the way that they act in a crisis since Joy leaving and them being in this missing persons case slash murder case brings out the worst of people. So by episode five, the show had sold me as a family drama show. I was really enjoying particularly Brooke and Troy's arcs and I thought that it was effective how they waited till episode four and five to get into their issues and to tie it back to this main theme. But then the show went and surprised me in episode seven by adding many suspenseful elements and scenes to the ending that were not in the book. So getting into the ending, most of episode seven was not in the book. It was completely new. Savannah specifically targeted the Delaney's because she was Harry's sister. However, in the book, Harry never shows up as a character, but in episode seven, the siblings go and visit Harry. And Harry says that his sister, Savannah, whose real name is Lindsay, tried getting money from him and even pulled a gun on him. And he even has a restraining order against her. And so the circumstances with why Savannah targeted this family were different than from the book, because in the book, once Harry and his dad went to move up in the tennis world, Savannah and her mom were kind of left to fend for themselves and they were struggling financially, even with food insecurity. And it turns out that in the book, it's described that Savannah would often go into the Delaney's house while her brother was practicing tennis. And every time she went in the house, the siblings would be rude to her or Joy would be rude to her. So she has this vendetta that they're mean people and that contributed to why she tried to manipulate this family and get money from them. Oh right, that reminds me, Troy paying her off to leave was also in the book. However, in the book, Savannah was mentioning that Stan was trying to seduce her and that's what led her to ask for blackmail money from Troy to keep her quiet. So it was a little bit flipped. Either way, Troy still paid her to leave. Back to Savannah. That was the difference in why Savannah targeted them. It was slightly different in the book versus the show. The book was more focused on, oh, I was mistreated as a kid by the Delaney siblings and Joy Delaney, but the show was more or just she wanted money she saw the article about them retiring and she had been a con artist and had many identities before i'm also remembering that the person in the motel that pulled a gun on troy and logan 
when they went to get her stuff. That was not in the book because in the book they went and took Savannah to the residence of her boyfriend or ex-boyfriend rather and he was there and he was friendly and willing to help. So it wasn't as dramatic as they made it in the show. We do find out that Joy and Savannah were just away in Australia. The book took place in Australia and we find out that Joy and Savannah were just away having a little vacation and Joy just returns to the house randomly herself in the book when she's done with her little trip with Savannah. As a matter of fact, in the book, right after the cops arrest Stan, Joy shows up and so she's like, what's going on? And Stan's like, oh, I'm getting arrested for your murder. So we see it's a little different here because Joy decides to stay in Savannah's house in the Georgia mountains. But then once Savannah gets wind that Joy's trying to get in contact with the family, she cuts the phone lines and we're kind of led to believe that Savannah's gonna try to keep her locked in the house. And then once, Savannah's out getting groceries and Joy sees what her real identity is and that she's Harry's sister and that she has a gun and Joy feels in danger. Then once they're in the car, Savannah doesn't let Joy out of the car and it leads to a car accident. Savannah runs off, they don't know where she is and then Joy's reunited with her family. Also in the book, Joy wrote a whole note about where she was going and put it on the fridge with a fridge magnet but the note fell and the dog took it oh there was no dog in the show there was a dog in the book and so joy had thought the whole time in the book when she was out with savannah that she had communicated to her kids and spouse where she was and she also sent them a text telling them all where she was but the text didn't make sense with autocorrect so i thought that the added element of savannah trying to low-key keep joy captive and then the whole car scene and savannah checking instagram to see in real time what the updates were like with the hope circle and with stan getting arrested and with the hurricane coming into play because that was a long game decision to make there be a hurricane because that was the reason that joy wanted to go try to contact the family anyway because they didn't have to have a hurricane but maybe that's why they changed it to be in florida the whole time was so the hurricane thing was believable so to sum it up i thought that the show improved upon the book in the way that it elevated the sibling and family drama and really made the theme of apples never fall stand out and I thought that the added suspense and mystery elements made the show more engaging. I think that if you've watched the pilot and you're not really feeling it I would give a couple more episodes a try just because I think the pilot was the weakest episode out of all seven. I'm glad I stuck with it because by episode four and five I was invested and really impressed with the changes they made from the book. Those are my thoughts on the book versus the show of Apples Never Fall. Tell me in the comments your thoughts on the book versus the show and I'll see you in my next one. Bye!